What does Dallas do to get to the Boston Celtics? Also, the truth about Jason Tatum's play and Joe Mazzula, coaching genius. It's all right now on the Lockdown Celtics podcast. Thanks to Blockbuster Bread, it's holiday season, drop Drew in the mix. And three from KT, no, we not on the Knicks. Flushing competition like Al on Giannis. Juice and Big Zeus still being town's finest. Banner 18 going up in the rafters. Watch the seeds game in locked on after. Corrales on the breakdown. Clutch like a tip from D. White on the breakdown. John on the mic, document and domination. Matter pen of back bay, it's all seeds nation. Rain and Jays, how we started raising banners, how we finished. Locked on. Celtics pod, home of the winners. Hey there, welcome back to the Lockdown Celtics podcast, right here on the Lockdown Podcast Network, where it's your team every day, and I got you covered every single day, Monday through Friday. Plus, hey, forget Monday through Friday, Saturdays and Sundays too, because it's the NBA Finals, and I got you with every every day, every angle, everything you need. So make sure you're subscribed wherever you get your podcast, watch the show on YouTube, get into that comment section. Let me know what you think about the games, about what I'm saying, about this hotel room that I'm in, in Dallas. I'm here. I'm in Dallas for game three of the NBA Finals. We're going to talk about all of that stuff coming up. Today's show is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more at FanDuel right now. New customers get $200 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's $200 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to get started well on a big travel day like this i need support like jason tatum needs support like jalen brown needs support from guys like drew holiday so i'm bringing in my my ace in the hole my i don't know it's how much room it's a good day to be it's a good day to be drew holiday you know it's a great day is there is there a reason that i'm missing no it was just you're 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 saying great day to be drew holiday no, you're saying you need you need somebody to come in, you know, like yeah. like Jason Tatum, like Jalen Brown. The guy who did that in game two was Drew Holiday. So, you know, you're him. It's a good day. It's a good day to be him. He he was awesome. <laughs> he was awesome. He was awesome. Uh, we'll talk about Joe's coaching later on. We'll talk about Jason Tatum later on. Uh, let's just dive into it with you know some things that maybe we didn't get to from game one. Let's just start with Tom. Your thoughts, your takeaways from I'm sorry, game one. I said game one. That says game one there. I'm going to change that. It's game two. They've played oh, yeah. two well, NBA I was finals say, games. I can, I can give you some more game one leftovers if you want, but there was no, no. To, they've uh, they've played to... two, and I'm going to I'm going to correct that as you speak. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I I think again, it's 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 fascinating how how little changed, right? Like it, it's fascinating. That really how... is honestly the most fascinating part about all this. They just did it again. <laughs> they just did it again, and like. You know, I mean, like, look, I, I think there's there's things that can change when the series shifts to Dallas. I think, you know, if if Dallas role players, if they can make a couple of threes, you know, like like that could make a difference. Um, but like also the Celtics should make more threes. That'll make a bigger difference, I think, uh, quite frankly. Um, but realistically, it was just the same thing again, man. Like, it, you know, it just the thing that changed was the Celtics leaned more into all of the things that they did. Jason Tatum drove even more. Like they, they attacked the rim even more. They attacked Luca even more and you know, roughly the same result. Like I, I just, that to me is the biggest takeaway from game two is like into game one, we were all like, okay, well here are the things that we think the Celtics are probably going to try to do. And those were the things that the Celtics did into game two. We we're like, okay. I mean, that worked really well in game one, I guess do it again. And the Celtics were like, bah, bet let's yeah. do it and uh here we are <laughs> well and the reason why it worked like in the big takeaways after game one were that like this is repeatable this is repeatable and it continues to be repeatable yep. that's the problem for the Mavs like normally the way this should go is the Celtics did a thing and We'll say, okay, now let's see how Dallas reacts to that thing. And let's see how Boston reacts to what Dallas's reaction is going to be. Like you mentioned the Steve Jones uh, tweet about like the playoffs are all about how do you solve this problem right away, immediately. And the Mavs haven't solved anything. Nothing in the immediate, nothing in the interim, nothing in the long term. They have, they have solved zero in right. – 
you know, over, over game one. And so they did it in game one. They did it again in game two. Luca was better, but again, to I go mean, to Steve Jones and the dunker spot, like they talk about the push the do better button. Like, is there a, is there something that Dallas can do other than do better? Because here's the problem, right? You talk about adjustments and usually when you talk about adjustments, it's like, okay, maybe they should try to, you know, like bring a guy up to the level of the screen instead of, instead of dropping or something like that. Like those are the kinds of adjustments or, you know, send a second defender late, you know, like whatever it is. Like there's like, those are the type of adjustments you usually are making. The problem is that for the Mavs that what the adjustment they need is Luca, stop letting people run right by you challenge. And like, that's, yeah. <laughs> like until that gets fixed, I, like I, I don't know what they can do because that's you're you're going to give up either a layup at the rim or there's going to be, you know, when, when the Celtics have that, you know, with, with, yesterday it was Drew Holiday when they have that guy in the dunker spot, they can drop it off to him when they got those guys in the corners, they can, you know, kick, kick, kick. I mean, yeah, you know, I went back through and, and watched all, all the three pointers and 31 of them were like kick, kick, open, like relatively open shots. Like, yeah that's that's a lot the celtics didn't make very many of them and i mean you know maybe they struggle again from three but if you're the mavs you're i don't know i mean you, those aren't answers you're not coming up with answers you're hoping that things are going to happen and you're that's hoping yeah yeah you're hoping and and that and that's the problem the problem is that a lot of it is let's hope which is part of why Jason Kidd was like, oh, Jalen Brown's the best player and, and why they're they're probably going to try some other mind game. The, the, the number one thing they have to do is try to stop Boston's drives. And, and Luca is is they're going to hunt him. So how do you how do you take that away? Right. There, there's two options to me. You tell me what you think. Number one, it's a zone. Right. You just go zone, which the Celtics have eaten and digested and regurgitated all year long. They have just, just destroyed zones all year long. If Eric Spolstra, the zone master, oh, that might be an interesting nickname. You know, you had the Phil Jackson, the Zen master, if, if Spo is the zone master, zone master. you know? There you go. Mm. Well, if he, can't, if he can't come up with a zone with a defense that plays as hard as the, the Miami Heat defense does with Bam out of bio, the most mobile, best defensive center, uh, probably in the game right now. Uh, yeah, considering his mobility, yeah, I'm gonna go yeah. there. Yeah, um, if he can't do it with that team, even without Jimmy Butler, if he can't find a way to slow that zone down, and and a lot of this depends on Porzingis, but even Correct. without Porzingis, they 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 kind of beat it, but if they do have Porzingis, they're screwed. If they if he can't do it in Miami, what's Dallas going to do? They don't play zone. They barely play zone. Right. So you're asking them to do something they haven't done. It's either that, Tom, or they just say, "Okay, Jason Tatum, you want Luca? You got him." And you you do to Boston what they're doing to you. You want Luca? There he is. Go nuts, Jason Tatum versus Luka Doncic. Go nuts. You're not passing anybody. 14, 15, 16 potential assists. No, you took 22 shots in game two, take 32 shots in game three. You yeah. do it. You do it yourself, which both of those are bad options. Oh, 100%. I think the second one is the option, though. I think that's the one you you yeah. try. Because at that point, you know, if, if you give up the drive, kick, kick, right? If that if that becomes the thing that, you, that you're like, okay, like, I mean, then the Celtics are generating threes and the math problem gets way too hard, especially because Celtics have no reason to stop defending Luca the way they've been defending him. Like, don't let, you know, yeah, like just keep, yeah, if he if he's going to wear himself down, um, you know, in, in the first half and, and just get a bunch of buckets, like, cool. Like, yeah, you're probably going to get some step back buckets over Derek White. That's okay. You know, you're probably going to get a few over Al Horford. That's okay. You're not in, you know, you're a little injured. You're you're not going to be able to keep, continue that for the entire game. Like, I think game two was a pretty good indicator of that. I, I think I'm interested. I am interested to see. I If I were a decent kid, I think I would challenge Tatum. Tatum has not had a good shooting series. And, like, so much of that is the defense, right? So much of that is the double team, the triple team, that kind of thing. He hasn't had a good shooting series. But, like, you know, if you stop throwing those 
doubles at him, I think that probably changes. But yeah, I I think that's <laughs> the way you go. And it's a big risk, right? Because because you're you're betting against a guy who has done it before in the playoffs. But at least if you do that and it works and you steal game three, then you're somewhat back in business. Then you then you're working with something. And it's better than nothing. I I think I think you're right in that that's the play. And when we come back, I'm gonna tell you why that is the absolute worst case scenario for Dallas, because I'll tell you exactly how that's gonna go. It's not gonna be pretty. We'll talk about that in just a second. Today's show is brought to you by FanDuel. It's America's number one sportsbook because they're giving new customers $200 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. It's 200 bucks in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. So if you want to bet on the NBA Finals, if you want to bet on baseball, WNBA, we just had Caitlin Clark visit the, Mohe the uh, Connecticut Sun at Mohegan Sun. Uh, I, wish, I wish I was at that game. Uh, but I was on a plane, so my wife went to that game. You could have gone. You could have bet on that game at FanDuel slash FanDuel.com slash locked on. All you got to do is sign up there, make a $5 bet, you win, and you get 200 bucks that you can use to bet on anything from the finals MVP to who's going to hit one out of the park. So go to FanDuel.com slash locked on and add a big win to your summer bucket list. FanDuel's America's number one sports book. And it's America's number one sports book because they also help you set your limits, set your parameters, set your budget so you can make sure you're gambling responsibly and having fun at FanDuel.com. Yes, it is America's number one sports book. Thanks for making Lockdown Celtics your first listener today. Go check out Lockdown Sports today. It's streaming 24-7 on YouTube. It's also on the Amazon free Fire TV channels app. Go check it out. It's all the big stories, all the big shows, real conversation, not fake stuff, not people screaming at each other, making stuff up. It's real, real conversation. So go check that out on YouTube and then on the Amazon Fire TV channels app. So let's talk this through, Tom. If they just say, here's Luca, or I, it, it can't even be Luca. Like they, they just have to keep, I think it's just switching and they've got to pre switch and they just got to say, you're, you're going to, we're just not going to give you Luke. We're going to give you a one-on-one, -on -one, whatever it is. They have, they can't give him Luka Doncic. They can't just be like, go cook because he gets by him so easily. There's no, there's no resistance. So you can't do to Jason Tatum what Boston is doing to Luka Doncic. Luka can't get by the guys that are defending him. Tatum gets by Luka. Yeah. In like Jalen gets by Luca. Everybody gets by Luca. Hell, I might be able to drive by Luca Doncic at this point. Like he is just a turnstile. Well, to be clear, I don't. I, do we have much evidence of Derek White or Drew Holiday going by him? Because the Celtics are really just using Tatum and Jalen to pick on him constantly. Okay. So like, I guess I guess that's fair. I guess those guys are just setting up and and yeah. you know they're bringing up they're they're setting the screens. Uh, yeah. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna assume that they can blow by him. If you're not gonna send help, then Tatum's just gonna get dunks. And like the hierarchy is still dunks, free throws, three pointers, right? Dunks and lamps, free throws, three pointers. Um, so I, I just the Celtics I drove. Was, I wonder if Missoula would challenge that based on the the missed layup equals a a, a bucket it's on the still, other end. It still drives. It's still open lamps. It's still dunks. It's okay. just, it's just the rim reads, right? It, it's, right. and and this is, I don't want to like speak directly for Joe Missoula, but I feel like I've gotten a grasp on what he's saying because it's drive. Like the Celtics have been driving like crazy. And this yeah. goes into the truth about Jason Tatum. Was it 29 drives in game two? It's yeah. an outrageous number. 29 drives for a single player. He drove all the time, which is just can we, that. Can we real quick give him credit for being that conditioned? 29 drives yeah. in an NBA Finals game. Yeah. No, That's this is this, bonkers. This is the Jason Tatum had a bad shooting night. He had an amazing game. Like, this is people need to understand. 
that when you hear somebody talking about, well, Jason Tatum had a bad game, that person doesn't know ball because Jason Tatum played great basketball. He just shot like crap, and he knows it. He said it after the game, and he needs to shoot better. No doubt about it. I'm not going to sit there and be like, no, he can keep shooting like that. No, he needs to shoot better. But the I will take two, three, four more, whatever, however many games it needs to be for them to win this championship. If Tatum plays like that, the rest of the series, the Celtics are winning this thing easy because he's getting to the rim, he's drawing help, and he's making the right reads. That's yeah. why it's drive, kick, swing, open shot. And the Celtics shot like crap. And they they still won because they're just generating good looks. I love the shots they generated. I love the shots that they took. I thought it was all great. It just sometimes you miss. And if they do that again in game three, I'm telling you, they're gonna win that game by 30. If they if this if the Mavs defend the, the Celtics the same way and Tatum right. does the same thing and they get those same shots. They're winning that damn game by 30 because there were two or three spots there where the Celtics were up double digits and Hauser had a couple of shots. A couple of guys had a couple of shots and we're all talking on media row like, oh man, this feels like that moment where it's like they're on a little bit of a roll. They hit two, three shots and all of a sudden, boom, explosion. And, and, and it's, it's a wrap. So they, they cannot, they cannot give up those switches to, with Luca. They just can't willingly give up those switches with Luca. They got to fight to have somebody else in front of Tatum. And I think what they've got to do is switch everything except for Luca mm. and fight to just say, okay, Tatum, Jalen, same thing. You guys do it. You guys do it. Because I think what we saw in the, in the two losses in the playoffs, Porzingis, White, and Holiday were all quiet. And those two losses. And that's, that's I think, the secret sauce to beating Boston. It's don't let Tatum and Brown spray the ball. Because they both had, I think, 14 potential assists. 12, I think it was 12 or 14 potential assists. Both of them. And you can't, you can't have that if you're Dallas. It's just got to be, look, we got Luka and Kyrie. And it's just going to be us two versus your two best. And everybody else goes to the side. They got to find a way to bait Boston into that. And if they can't, this is going to be over in four or five. I I just I I don't know how you like e even if they do bait the Celtics into that. Like the Celtics still have the better role players by a wide wide margin. And like even if if you're dueling, if your stars are dueling, having better role players makes up still makes a big difference. You know, like I, I yes. I don't know. I, I I'm, we're trying. I'm <laughs> we're trying. We're trying to give Dallas. Look, here's the some... thing. No, here's the thing. I do think that this series is not over, right? Like, I do think that there is, is still like, and I think the Celtics are again. I think the Celtics for the second game in a row are smart to be in the locker room, being like, "Let's be hungry." Let's, you know, they're yeah. saying all the right things, thinking all the right things, doing all the right things. If Dallas makes more threes, if they're if they're if their bench players make more threes or their their role players, I mean, that's going to make a difference. If Kyrie Irving plays a little bit better in uh like out of Boston, you know, that's going to make a big difference. Mm -hmm. Like it, it, I mean, the man is shook in TD Garden, and like I'm not, <laughs> I'm not even going to blame him. You know, it's like yeah, I I too would be shook if that many people were like <laughs> chanting that I suck. Like yeah, I don't think I would play well. I get it. Like. But like th those things are going to be different, and I think that's probably going to matter to some extent. Um, but you know, so it's like it just it, th this whole series has just been so simple, you know. As I like, yeah, the, and and that's where I keep coming back to. It. It's just like I think the Celtics are in a great position. I think they're a much better team. I think they'll, I think they'll probably win Game Three. Um, but like based on the fact that Luka Doncic has to be out there at all times. And the Celtics have just been barbecue chicken in him every single time down the floor. And like, that's so problematic for the Mavs. But that said, like, I, I do think that like things will change a little bit in game three because they have to, like if the Mavericks don't win this game, it, this series is clearly over. And yeah, I don't know. I, I don't, I don't think the Celtics, I don't think Celtics fans should start counting chickens yet, but I mean, it's it's pretty close. It's pretty close to chicken counting time. 
So I'm a little surprised to see that Dallas is favored by one and a half mm. on FanDuel. Um, I'm I'm shocked. I'll be honest with you. I'm shocked at that because I thought I thought Boston would be favored um, throughout the series. Um, I, if and if I was the Celtics and I heard that, it'd be like, excuse me, excuse me, <laughs> where are the underdogs? Are you kidding me? Have you not watched people? Um, yeah. No, the Mavs will shoot better. So will Boston. Like yeah. th- th- that's the thing. Like so yep. will Boston. And why do the role players still matter in, you know, I- if you challenge Tatum and Brown to be the guys because those guys are still going to offensive rebound. And I'll go to the thing that I said I said it back in the Miami series and I think this is especially true in this series. You cannot change habits. You cannot ask the Mavericks to defend differently, just materially differently than they have over the course of a a whole season. And especially since the trade deadline with, you know, when they got Gafford and Washington, all those guys, um, they play a certain way. They've built their habits. This is what we do. And you can try a zone. You can try be like, no, we're gonna just, we're gonna switch everything and all this stuff. You don't think Boston is ready for that? Like, you can challenge those guys, but what's just gonna happen is we're gonna see a bunch of slipped screens, right? We're gonna see things like uh, screening, screening your own man coming coming up, and like like you're gonna set a screen for Jason Tatum, and you end up screening your own man because they end up switching, right? So if if somebody has Luca and Jason Tatum's against, I'd say just say Gafford, and they bring Luca up and it's Holiday, then Holiday just sets a pick on Luca, right? Because they they both expect him to switch, and Tatum's just going to turn a corner, and yeah. then everybody on Dallas is going to react and be like, "Oh no, here it comes!" You can only have a guy dunking on you for so long before everybody decides to help, and it's just going to be the same thing: drive, kick, swing, swing. Like so, they can try it. Yeah, but Boston knows, like, oh, they're switching everything. Oh, here are the slips. Here's the screen, your own man. Here's all the little. Here's the switching stuff that we do. That's also awesome. And like, you go ahead and try to stop that. And real quick to your point, that's the difference between like the type of attack that we're talking about with Tatum and the type of attack that we've seen with Luca, because Luca is being forced to take and make because he's awesome at them step back jumpers. But those are step back jumpers. And what we're talking about with Tatum is 29 drives. We're talking about going to the rim, yeah. getting layups, getting to the free throw line, getting dunks, getting easy baskets. And we're talking about coaching. And we're talking That's, about coaching. We're talking about coaching because, yeah, I don't know, Jason Kidd, what do you got? Let's see it. What do you got besides two different pairs of glasses? I don't know why he wears a pair pair of glasses, like the clear glasses pregame and the dark glasses during the game. I don't know what that's about, but you know, that's that's his adjustment. That's that's the only adjustment I've seen him make. Those are his reading the game. Those are his reading the game glasses. Not (laughs) he he needs he needs better glasses. (laughs) We'll talk talk about all that next. Today's show. Whoop! Hi Tom. Bye Tom. Today's show is brought to you by. Better help. Now, I've talked about therapy. I've talked about my therapy journey. Um, and I think, look, there's a lot of guys who listen to the show. And I think guys are a little, it's a little bit tougher for guys to say, oh, yeah, I'm going to go to therapy. I don't need therapy. These are tough guys, tough guys. Well, you know what? It's not, it's not about being a tough guy. It's about being honest with yourself. But I understand it. It's tough. You don't want to admit that maybe you need to talk some stuff through. This is why Better Help can help you up because it's all done online. It's all kind of, you can, you don't have to go searching for somebody. You don't have to like make excuses as to why you're leaving. You just go to betterhelp.com uh, slash locked on NBA and you sign up, you take a brief questionnaire and this is all done online. It's designed to be convenient. It's flexible. It's suited to your schedule. You find some time on your own to talk to a therapist. If you want to do it that privately, totally cool. And if you don't jive with that, pri- that, that therapist, you just switch no extra charge. So I know being a uh, you know, former athlete myself, it's always been like tough, tough, play through everything, play through everything. You don't need this, but maybe you do. I did, and it made me a better person. It made me more aware of who I am. And I think just talking some stuff through can really help you uh, 
become a little healthier. So give it a try. Go to betterhelp.com slash lockdown NBA. You get 10% off your first month. Betterhelp, H E L P.com slash lockdown NBA. Thanks for making Lockdown Celtics your first listen every day. Go check out Lockdown NBA. I'll be back here in my hotel room in Dallas doing Lockdown NBA tomorrow with Jake Madison talking about the NBA Finals and whatever else comes up. I know they're going to be talking about the Lakers and their farce of a head coaching uh, search. That's going to be on the Lockdown NBA today, so go check that out. Go laugh at the L.A. Lakers. I mean, honestly, Tom Westerholm, what, what, a, what a great off day for Celtics fans. You're up two nothing in in the uh, NBA Finals, and then on the off day, the Lakers are basically used and abused and just torched. To be like, ah, no, nah, I don't want your coaching job. Uh, so that a little fun. Who gets who gets the little shot in for it in the in a uh, when you're up two nothing in the finals? This is beautiful. I texted him a shout out my dad. He's a big UConn fan and a big Celtics fan slash Laker hater. So this was. I mean, the, the, he cannot stop winning at the moment. This is a, <laughs> so, this is, this is a so hot streak great. like you read about. Yeah. I mean, really, everything. Everything's coming up Millhouse right now. Yeah. Uh, so, all right. So, Jason Tatum has had this this amazing game. Um, I, I think Tatum, when you look at the numbers, when you look at everything he's doing, it's this willingness from him and from Jalen Brown. Like, I, I, I want to make sure both of these guys get the credit. But I think because Jalen has had good scoring games and he was the conference finals MVPs and, and Tatum's had tough, tough shooting in the playoffs. People are like, oh, wow, Jalen's carrying Tatum. Holiday's carrying Tatum. You had the great tweet. You're like, kind of weird to say the Holiday's carrying Tatum when like half of his shots have been assisted by Tatum. Yeah. Uh, but that's a testament to Tatum and his desire to win. And Joe Missoula, who, you know, you hear him, you hear him mic'd up, you hear him talk, you hear the guys talk. And I've spent so much time over the past two years kind of like defending Missoula and being like, you know what? No, this guy, this guy actually knows what he's talking about. Little quirky, no doubt about it. Little yeah. quirky, you know, this is a little, little bit of a maniac. Drew Holiday calls him crazy. You know, I, <laughs> I just loved that moment of like, so you keep saying you keep using crazy when it comes to Joe Missoula. Why? And he's like, because he's crazy. <laughs> uh, he's he is. Uh, but man, he's got these guys just all in lockstep. Yeah. And to hear him say, like, the thing that resonated with me in the mic'd up segment that's making the rounds on on social media, he's like, Don't be a hero on the first drive. Drive second attack, third attack. That is so important. That is yeah. so key because it's, and it's, I, I had a line of questioning that kind of got to the heart of this uh, on the practice day, but it was like, when you got, I didn't say it like this because I didn't want to be disrespectful. You got Luca in front of you, right? And you're just like, fried chicken. Let me cook this dude. And the temptation to be like, I'm going to go get mine. I'm just going to yeah. go. I'm going to get these tough layups. I'm going to dunk on them, whatever it is. And they're like, nope, I'm going to drive. And the second this guy comes over, Gafford or Lively or whomever, kick, swing, swing, second attack. Whew, now more guys come. And you're just bending the, the defense to a point where, yeah, that shot was not bad. That shot was good. Wow, this shot is the best shot. To have these guys fully bought in and to have that messaging just yeah. part of an incredible coaching job by Joe Mazzula and the whole staff, the whole staff. Um, and there's that other clip, Tom, of there. I forget where, when the defensive play, but it's like Sam Cassell and Charles Lee, like, go, go, no, here, no. They're directing the, the, the defenders and the ball is following exactly where they're pointing to just after they point. They're like, no, it's going here. No, it's going there. No, it's going there. The level of preparation from the head coach all the way down is incredible. And the coaching on the other side? I don't know. Where is it? Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, I, I think before, you know, Joe's been incredible. Um, one thing to I think is is interesting about the the mindset of these guys, right? Because we've seen we, we saw these guys mature. We saw what it looked like when they weren't fully matured yet to the point where they are willing to make these sacrifices. And I think it's really interesting some of the parallels between them and the, and the 08 team, right? Where you, you get these guys who are all bought in and who are all just ready to win right now. And it's like, these guys are ready to win right now a lot younger than those guys were. You know, that's really interesting to me. And I think part of that yeah. comes with the level of success that they achieved early on, but then also the level of failure, you know, the level of mm -hmm. um, loss that they experienced early on in their careers and how, like how much more that accelerated their timeline to now where they're like, where, where Jason Tatum is just like, yeah, like we're so close to my goal. Why would I care if I'm scoring a bunch of points? Why would I, why would that be my focus when we're two games away from winning a title? And it's like, well, Jason, because, you're in your mid twenties. <laughs> like it's, yeah. it would, <laughs> wouldn't be that absurd for you to care about that. It's, it's great that you don't, but like, it's not like it's out of the question or unheard of that somebody in their mid twenties would feel that way and think that way. It really speaks to the players for one thing. And I think yeah, to, to your point, right? Like, I mean, like, yeah, the, the level that Joe has them playing at is, really impressive it speaks to the to the level of buy-in it speaks to the um i think the the level of the, the kind of perspective that he's brought to this team the kind of uh, you know i keep calling it like you know kind of therapy talk where it's just you know like be present be present be here be you know yeah no, like true focus on the next the next thing ahead of you um yeah it's 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 refreshing you know to to those of us who um covered the Tristan Thompson and his cancer years. Like, it's like, it's, you know, those, like this, we, those teams were so <laughs> annoying to cover and like watch. Cause it was just, I mean, it could be anything <laughs> on any given night. <laughs> like, yeah. um, you know, I, I am very on record as being very negative about those teams. Um, mm. but you know, this team is so far beyond that. It's so different than that team. Yeah. It's, um, it's been really impressive. It's funny. Usually a guy has to get into his thirties and change teams before he realizes I got to change. I got to change what I'm doing. Look and at Porzingis. It's taken him three teams. I mean, he's not in his thirties, but it's taken him three teams, including one really bad one to, you know, yeah. four teams. To be like, to oh, okay. Team. Yeah. Wow. I'm in wizard's purgatory. I guess I got to change. Like, yeah. Thir 33 minutes into this podcast is a really crappy time to throw this thing out there but i'll throw it out there real quick does this team sacrifice as much as it does if jalen brown if this is jalen brown's contract year instead of last year because he got that contract it's very easy to be like yeah i'm sacrificing you've got you've got your max contract you signed the richest contract in nba history the first year not even the first year like next year is the first year of that contract yeah. so like not even getting into that. Kind of, this is the ultimate year to be like, yeah, I don't care what my numbers are because yeah. you've got five years of contract set up at like more money than anybody has ever seen to this point. Like uh, you could be like, yeah, I don't care if I score two points a game. I mean, obviously you do, but like if there was ever a time for a guy in his mid 20 in his prime 27 years old to be like, yeah, I don't care about my numbers. This is the situation for Jalen Brown to care to not care about his numbers. And Tatum's getting that money no matter what. So, of Fact. course, he doesn't yep. care. Yep. So, it's like, this is, if there was ever a situation for two guys in their 20s to be like, you know what? Yeah, screw it. I will buy in. Yeah. This contractual situation is, is it. The timing of the contracts and like, okay, now we're going to get Porzingis. Now we're going to get Holiday. Like, all of that stuff, the timing of everything. And Joe Mazzullis talked about, like, the timing's got to be right. Talk about perfect timing of all that stuff coming together for this to be the case. Absolutely. Yeah. And again, you combine that with, I think, years of evidence that they, you know, that like having some other guys around would help quite a bit, <laughs> you know, like years of evidence, no, that's of right. like, you know, years of evidence of like, Hey, if, if we don't have shooters everywhere on the floor, uh, the heat now can collapse everything and just be aggressive and steal the ball. Like, yeah. and, you know, years of improvement too, right? Like, I mean, Jalen is a much better ball handler and, you know, Tatum is, is much stronger. And like, 
yeah, it, I mean, really, the confluence of factors that have come together to put the Celtics up 2-0 in the 2024 finals is bonkers. Did you hear him say confluence? That's pretty good. Confluence. Mm-hmm. All right, we're going to go out on confluence. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Tom. Appreciate you, man. I always appreciate Tom Westerholm. I appreciate you, the listener, the watcher, who's here with me, hell, seven days a week. Uh, because why not? Uh, we'll see. We'll see. Maybe Saturday. Ugh, it's a travel day. Yeah, I'll find a way to get you a podcast. I will find a way to get you seven days of podcast because it's the NBA finals. What are we going to do? And hell, maybe that Saturday is going to be a post championship uh, because that's it's two more games. The Celtics need two more and they got two here in Dallas and we'll see. I don't expect it. I'm not trying to be arrogant Dallas Mavericks fans, but you tell me where the answers are. We'll talk about it. Make sure you're subscribed wherever you get your podcast. Watch the show on YouTube. Get into that comment section. I know it's a little devoid of Mavs fans now, so go find the Mavs fans over in the Lockdown Mavericks uh, feed. Go have some fun. And I would love it if you shared the podcast, spread the word, tell everybody they should be listening to and watching the Lockdown Celtics podcast right here on the Lockdown Podcast Network. It's your team every day.